Allah Akbar. Our faith traditions are not radically different from each other. Congressman Ellison led efforts to protect Minnesota children from dangerous pesticides and chemicals. He promoted legislation to restore the voting rights of ex-offenders, and he successfully advocated for an increase in the state's minimum wage. But can being a Muslim cause some people anxiety? A lot of the people are fascinated by your faith. And I think for the outside world, it's something new and different that, hey, there are Muslim congressmen in, in the U.S. There's now two. There's now two. Well, people have nothing to fear, but it's not because, but, and, and, and there, are, they had, there is nothing uh, to fear because there's no harm, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't cause anxiety in some people. New things will evoke anxiety in people sometimes. And as a result, both myself and Andre Carson have had to do a lot of ed education uh, with some of our colleagues. And so, uh, quite frankly, we're both very well treated by our colleagues, but there have been times when we've had to explain uh, different Islamic concepts so that uh, people would uh, have a bet, so that we, we could improve the relationship. Uh, is it working? I think that it is. As a matter of fact, uh, Nancy Pelosi, the, our, the Speaker of the House, has been instrumental in, impro in improving uh, the environment. Uh, when I was first elected, we had a, uh, a dinner for all the members of Congress, which was the day before the big swearing-in, the day when you and I first met at the, uh, at the swearing-in. And uh, the, there was a dinner the night before, and she asked me to offer uh, a prayer to all the ones who were assembled for the new members of Congress. And uh, of course, I, uh, I, uh, I actually recited Al-Fatiha and added some words to that as well. And, uh, uh, and, and, and she said after the prayer that, see, this is similar to what uh, any other religious institution, any other Abrahamic faith might offer in terms of uh, a prayer. And uh, she also uh, said to me, look, you swear on, on anything you want. And this is in reaction to the big controversy around me swearing it on the Quran. So she has been great in opening up territory uh, for all faiths, all, all people to worship as they are inspired to do so. And of course, she went to, uh, I, went to, I accompanied her on a trip to the Middle East when we went through the Omid Mosque in Damascus. Uh, she was wearing a head cover as we walked through their photos of this. And so she is a person who herself is Catholic, but who is very uh, tolerant and open of people's uh, different worship traditions. So it's been a good ride, but it, it's, we've had a few bumps along the way. But someone who lived his entire youth as a Christian, why would he convert to Islam? The gentleman from Minnesota is recognized for three Mr. minutes. Mr. Speaker, uh, let me thank the gentleman commemorating the month of Ramadan. I am uh, celebrating Ramadan myself personally. But how did you revert to Islam? Well, um, it's a good question because uh, I uh, always was, um, I, I, I grew to want to search outside of what I had been given, you know. Uh, I grew up uh, as a, as in the Catholic Church. Uh, I was an altar boy in the Catholic Church. But then when I got uh, to be around 15 or 16, I remember reading a book about the autobiography of Malcolm X. And I thought that was fascinating. And I wanted to know more about Islam, but I didn't know any Muslims, so I, it just was something that just stayed on the shelf for a while. But then uh, when I got to campus, um, I, uh, you know, was, I think we were studying, I'm not sure what it was, maybe it was calculus or something, but my study partner got up on one Friday afternoon, close to noontime, and said, you know, uh, I gotta go. So, and I asked him, where are you going? We we're studying. He said, no, I gotta, I gotta go. I said, well, well, where are you going? He said, well, I'm going to prayer. And he said, you're welcome to come if you want. And he told me it was Juma and that I was welcome to accompany him. And so we both went. And I've just been going back ever since. And so uh, it was shortly after that that I said Shahada, and it was, uh, and I've been going ever since then. I'm 45 years old now, and that was uh, about 26 years ago. So can we say, would it be okay to say that when you reverted to Islam, you took a part of Christianity with you? Yes, and I think that it's important to understand that um, our faith traditions are not radically different from each other. 
Uh, in fact, uh, we, we all uh, look to Abraham as uh, the, 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 the monotheists who helped establish our faith. We're all children of Adam. And, uh, and of course, Islam embraces all, the, all the, the, the prophets. It's part of our faith that we do so. All of the scriptures, you know, we understand that they have been altered, but we do believe in the revealed scripture of Moses and Jesus and the Injil. And, and so there is, there is common ground uh, between uh, the Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, and, and even other faiths besides those. And so I think it is important to talk about what we share in common and not always focus on what we do not share in common.